I heard you, I think. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay, I can't perfect. see you, but I will probably once I give you the host. Yes. Okay. Perfect. That was, can you close the door? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. And we're at seven, but I'm like, I'm just, um, it's strange that there's no one with us. There's no one on this presentation. Oh, yeah. So, um, <laughs> let me just see what's happening here. No, we have three participants now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> do you want to wait five more minutes? Yeah, because. Yeah. Okay. Good. I just wanted to make sure people had the right, <laughs> the right length. How many people are we expecting? Uh, about forty. Okay. Yeah, I think we should wait five, at least five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, it is just seven. Hi. So, okay, hold on. Let's go back because your video is still not on for me. Can you try and get your video on, Cora? Sorry, I don't know what is happening tonight, but man. There it goes. <laughs> okay. All right, can you turn my video on? I mean, I don't need a video on once we get going, but it's fine. Actually, we can leave it off. <laughs> but oh. <laughs> I can't uh, turn it on now. Oh, that is weird. Okay. Yeah, no, she can see in here. Yeah, so good. we're good. Yeah. Hi, guys, I can see you. <laughs> and we have seven participants. <laughs> yeah, we still have four minutes to go. That's good. Yeah. yeah. What's that? 44. Oh, that's Joel's. Oh, Nothing to do with us. <laughs> this is where we're looking. Oh, here we are. Yeah. <laughs> This is a toasty warm and funny. I'm glad we be here too warm. No. <laughs> oh, we have someone saying in the chat. I'll just let you guys take it away when you are ready. Oh, okay. All right. So why don't we, can you type or say, uh, we'll start in about five minutes. We will start in about five minutes, participants, um, yeah. because awesome. they can see us, they can yeah. hear us. Um, if you can't hear us or you can't see us, just type in the chat that you're having issues and uh, Beth will will assist you. Um, but yeah, we are expecting a few more people. So we'll just wait another couple minutes. Okay. We have the attendees. There we go. Lovely. Unless we can close. Yeah. We'll start at about 7.05. <laughs> See if more people join. So we're expecting about 40 today. That food looks delicious. I know. I'm looking at this community natural foods picture. I don't know if everyone else can see this, but there is a lovely picture of lovely looking food that community natural foods has posted. <laughs> mm, there it is. We'll start in about a minute. Um, we'll just kind of get going and people will trickle in as they like, but I don't want to keep everybody waiting. 
Okay, so we have, this is the number of participants here. Yeah. Good. Now we'll start in like 30 seconds. Oh, number nine, see, we waited for that person. <laughs> <laughs> and there were a few accidents on Deerfoot today. There were so several. Trying to get my time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Bit of a challenge today. It's okay. It's the boring anatomy part at first. So <laughs> hopefully everyone will join in soon. Um, okay. So let's just see here. All right. So if anybody has any questions throughout the presentation, uh, we will address all questions at the end. So you can type in your question into the chat and we will go through them at the end. I'm just going to share my screen here. Okay. Perfect. And we're going to do there. Lovely. Okay. So welcome everybody. Today we are discussing everything about period health that exists within the scope of practice of a physiotherapist and a holistic practitioner. Your name? Oh yeah, well, we're gonna get to that. So today we're talking about going with the flow, how to boost the health of your period. Introductions to start. So um, we are from Lumira Pelvic Health and Wellness. My name is Cora. This is Leanna um, at our Hello. clinic. <laughs> at our clinic, we specialize in pelvic floor physiotherapy reflexology, aromatherapy, and holistic health. We treat all clients from all walks of life. And today we are talking to everyone who has ever dealt with menstruation. Um, we are located at 8989 McLeod Trail Southwest, Unit 102 in Calgary. A little bit about us. So starting with me, um, I'm Cora. I'm a physiotherapist. Uh, I specialize in pelvic and orthopedic health. And I am the owner of Lumira Pelvic Health and Wellness. And I am Leanna, a registered reflexology practitioner, certified aromatherapist, and a holistic practitioner. And I've been practicing for 34 years. And I'm very proud to say this is my daughter. We are a family owned clinic. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Oh. All right. So today's agenda. Today, we are going to talk about menstruation, just some very interesting, well, I think they're interesting, some people might find them boring, but they're <laughs> basics, things that I think everyone should know. Um, we're going to talk about some common period problems. Now, I kept it within our scope of practice, the things that we see most often in clinic. Um, there's, It's obviously not an exhaustive list that you see here, but it's stuff that we treat most often in clinic. Um, and then we'll get to the, the bread and butter, how we can help. Um, I, at the end of our presentation, uh, or the near end, we will do just a quick blurb about different period related products, and then there'll be time for questions and answers. Okay, so menstruation 101. Okay, so what is the purpose of a menstrual cycle? Why do we have it? Um, well, it is a vital sign of health. Um, there's a lot that the menstrual cycle has um, in terms of influence on the brain, the immune system, the gut microbiome, our metabolism, and our stress response. That's why a lot of times we'll notice, you know, we're a little bit foggy mentally during our cycles. We will, you know, be more likely to get a cold. Um, we may have more bloating and we're definitely more stressed. <laughs> Um, the menstrual cycle itself can provide a lot of insight into hormonal imbalances, um, nutrient and immune system deficiencies, as well as allergies. Historically, there has been a lot of shame around the menstrual cycle, and it's time for that stop, that to stop. So let's um, let's just dive in and talk about it super openly. The menstrual cycle is linked to the circadian clock. So if any of you had attended our sleep seminar, we talked ad nauseum about the circadian clock or the circadian rhythm. This is the biorhythm that sort of regulates your day-to-day -day functioning. It tells you when you get hungry, when it's time to use the bathroom, when it's time to sleep, when it's time to wake up. And the menstrual cycle is very closely linked with that. Believe it or not, any irregularities in the circadian clock can lead to more painful, irregular, and longer periods. Some key menstrual cycle hormones. Okay, so we have follicle stimulating hormone or FSH. This hormone stimulates ovarian follicles to mature. 
Imbalances of this hormone can lead to infertility. Luteinizing hormone or LH triggers the release of a mature egg. Because as we're going through the menstrual cycle, it's almost like the body is like, are we going to get pregnant? No. Nope. Okay. And that's fine. So um, the triggered release of that mature egg is, is done by the luteinizing hormone. Turns out abnormal levels in this particular hormone have been linked to PCOS and infertility. And what is PCOS? We are going to talk about that, but polycystic ovarian syndrome. Stay tuned. Um, insulin. Insulin regulates blood sugar and imbalances in insulin lead to menstrual irregularities. Also things like diabetes and all kinds of other problems in the body, but as it is period related, insulin imbalances can cause problematic periods. Cortisol. This is dubbed the stress hormone. When it is too high, we have all kinds of problems in the body, but especially when high, um, we get reduced progesterone and we get reduced sex drive, which leads both lead to infertility as well as disrupted ovulation, which also leads to infertility. We have estrogen. It is vital for ovulation. Believe it or not, estrogen has been found to be somewhat protective to thing for things like dementia, bone density loss, heart disease, and high blood pressure. Estrogen is also wonderful for keeping our muscles nice and toned. Progesterone maintains uterine lining. Counter It counterbalances the estrogens, so they kind of are this kind of relationship. Um, they uh, Progesterone promotes relaxation and sleep as well. Females also have testosterone and testosterone is associated with our sex drive. There is a slight surge during and after ovulation. I wonder why it's almost like the body wants you to go get busy. Yeah. <laughs> Time to procreate. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So phases of the menstrual cycle. We have four phases. Some people define them as two phases. I learned them as four phases. We have phase number one, the follicular phase. This is where we have a buildup of our menstrual hormones. And what we'll notice in our day-to-day -day lives is that we actually have more energy. It's a good time to start a new project. So this is a good time to tell your boss, okay, I'm ready to take on a new project. Then we have the ovulation part of our menstrual cycle. This is where the FSH and estrogen hormones peak luteinizing hormone surges and then declines. There is a greater desire to be more social and creative during this particular phase. You want to go out, hang with your friends. You want to do fun, creative projects around the house. Then we have the luteal phase. This is where progesterone peaks. And we may have in our day-to-day -day lives a greater desire to complete projects and turn our attentions a little bit more towards self. So this is not the time to start a new project at work. It's the time to kind of, all right, I've put my seal of approval on this one. I'm going to just kind of exactly. zen into my husband. Exactly. We kind of want to come back inside. We have a tendency during this phase to retreat from our social activities and be maybe a little bit more task-oriented for ourselves. During menstruation, this is where everything has a culmination of the actual menstrual flow or bleed. Um, we have a tendency to be more self-reflective and want to curl up with a good book and a cup of tea. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about some common period problems. As I said before, this is by no means an exhaustive list, but it's definitely going to touch on the ones that we see most often in clinic. The first most common period problem is known as dysmenorrhea, also known as painful periods. There are two reasons why we can have painful periods or two camps of dysmenorrhea. The first camp known as primary dysmenorrhea is defined as having painful periods from excessive uterine contractions without any palpable lesions or issues going on in the reproductive system. So we don't have fibroids. We don't have um, any cysts that are detected on ultrasound. We don't have any endometriosis. We just have painful periods. Primary dysmenorrhea affects about 94% of women aged 10 to 20. That is a lot. No. That is a crap ton yep. in my, it's like, yep. and 88% aged 19 to 41. 
So chances are we've all had even a mild version of dysmenorrhea at one time or another. Sometime in the way, yeah. Except you. I don't think you had any painful. None at all. Yeah, we don't like her. No. So just saying. Well, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll see how lucky I've been. <laughs> Um, some indicators or, or reasons why someone might be more likely to have primary dysmenorrhea, a few factors. So family history, low BMI or body mass index. So if you are maybe a smaller framed person, you're actually more likely to have more painful periods. Don't actually know why, but that really sucks. Um, maybe it could have something to do with estrogen, lower bone mass density. It's interesting Gonna because problem solve that later. <laughs> some of our clients who have had that were tinier women. Yeah, absolutely. Really true. Absolutely. Me when I was, yeah. Yeah. Um, also an early age of menarche. So menarche is actually defined as your first period. So if you had your period younger than the age of 12, you're more likely to have primary dysmenorrhea. Secondary dysmenorrhea is when someone has endometriosis, adenomyosis polycystic ovarian syndrome or ovarian cysts and uterine fibroids. And we can attribute the pain during one's period to those things. Endometriosis. This is probably the most common thing that I see in clinic. And a lot of people, unfortunately, come to me and they're just like, well, I have this. I was told to do pelvic floor physio. I guess it's hopeless. That is not true. That is not true at all. And we're going to talk about that in a bit. But basically what endometriosis is, is the growth of uterine tissue outside of the uterus. Typically, the endometrial lining is supposed to thicken during our cycle, and then we shed that during actual menstruation. If that uterine lining is growing anywhere else outside of the uterus, it's endometriosis. Most commonly, this happens around the ovaries, the fallopian tubes, and sometimes the intestines. I have had clients have it on the diaphragm. And I heard one report of a woman who had it on her brain. Does anybody know how that gets to the other parts of the body? Is that ever been? We are not sure. The, the understanding of endometriosis is still not great. We have, we have ideas that perhaps something is getting into mainstream circulation and circulating, and then it just latches onto different parts of the body and then grows there. But we're not 100% sure what the cause or cure for endometriosis is as of now in Western medicine, but we're constantly working on it. We're constantly finding new problems. And there's so many treatments that we can discuss with you and we'll discuss with you today to help with this. That's the good part. That's the good part. Nothing's hopeless. Um, endometriosis, believe it or not, the telltale sign of endometriosis is not so much painful periods, but actually very heavy flow. So um, that's the telltale sign. So if you have something called abnormal uterine bleed, you're more likely to be diagnosed as having endometriosis, but pain often accompanies endometriosis. In fact, I haven't had one endometriosis patient has had who has pain. not come to me yeah. in crippling pain. Yeah. So I think they need to update their criteria, but just saying that's where we're at right now. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS. So this is another thing that we don't actually know what causes it. And we don't have a full-blown cure for it. But again, we've got a lot of treatments for you. Um, basically what happens here is we have the recurring development of cysts on the ovaries. It's often very painful, especially if those cysts burst, mm -hmm. which can happen. Now, some people will go and have surgery to have the cysts removed, that's but then right. they just come back. They just yeah. come back and just come back. And that yeah. sucks because you don't want to be cutting into yourself. Really, unless you have to. You want to find out why they keep coming back. Exactly. We're not treating the underlying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, PCOS is associated with often long, but very much irregular periods. You never really know when your period's coming. Um, and this can be very difficult trying to figure out when to be, you know, getting busy and trying to get pregnant because you don't know when you're ovulating. You don't know when you're about to have your cycle. You, you kind of use the calendar to count back from your last cycle, but okay, 14 days, what or not. And that's how you know all right, this is the time to, to practice intercourse, but it makes it very difficult for women um, with PCOS to not know when their cycle is coming. Um, I never sorry. knew. I never knew when my cycle was coming. I didn't have PCOS, but I never knew when my cycle was coming. That did you was have, on. did you have cysts? No, no, I didn't. And that was, that was what was really odd. Mm. And I wasn't regular. So that was, 
made it very interesting growing up. Yeah, yeah well, that's you're going to be surprised on a monthly basis. That's a good time. Sure. Um, but to, you don't have to have PCOS in order to have irregular periods. Right. There's all kinds of things in between. You not having cysts just meant you didn't have recurring cysts on the ovaries, but right. you had irregular periods. So your hormones weren't likely regulated. Exactly. And it was probably because you ate all the foods that harm, which we'll talk about shortly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did eat all the foods that harm. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Stay tuned. Um, they did find that luteinizing hormone or LH uh, is probably the one that is most linked to, to sex hormone imbalances that leads to PCOS. Um, and oftentimes PCOS that goes unchecked leads to enlarged ovaries just because they keep swelling anyways. So they're just like, Ugh. <laughs> not fun. All right, so now let's talk about how we can help. Just some general therapeutic goals. You want to, as, as any clinician, you want to encourage your clients to make sure that they monitor their energy levels throughout the cycle. Behave accordingly. Don't overextend yourself when you're having those days where you're you know, wanting to retreat a little bit, wanting to zen a little bit, turn your focus inwards. This is probably not the time to do a heavy duty vinyasa class. In fact, I studied my yoga teacher training and we were told don't do heavy duty vinyasa That's yoga right. during menstruation. Yeah. There's lots of schools of thought around that, but I've tried it myself. I don't feel good afterwards. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, I'm just like, wow, that class royally kicked my glutes and I don't need that. So. Listen, listen to your body. Your body yeah. will tell you like if that day you wake up during your cycle, it's like, oh, you know, I'm just not feeling it. Then don't. Yeah. I mean, you are expelling blood. And for some people, it's a lot of it. So that's a lot of iron that's leaving your body, right? And it's work for your body yes. to go through these hormones. My God, exactly. just, just modify your exercises you need to. Yeah. But most importantly, encourage regulation of the circadian clock. So make sure you practice good sleep hygiene. Get to bed at a reasonable time and a consistent time. Wake up at a reasonable time and a consistent time. Um, we were at the Women's Day seminar that Community Natural Foods had on uh, Saturday. Mm -hmm. Wonderful seminar, by the way. Yeah. And uh, there was a wonderful naturopath there who told us that it's great as soon as you wake up to get outside, go stand in the sun for five minutes, mm -hmm. even on those minus 30 days bundle up yeah. because your body will actually take in the full photonic um, spectrum of light and actually help you wake up. This is wonderful to help promote the circadian clock. Of course, also avoiding certain foods that may not be fantastic for hormonal regulation. So sugar and artificial sweeteners, which I basically think you lived on from age zero to last up. week. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> no, which are, and this is foods too, Cora, that don't, uh, that, you know, aren't very good for you anyway. Yeah, that's right. Certainly if you can't keep off of them during your cycle, it would be yeah. a really good time to avoid. Yeah. 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 Or honestly, any time because mm -hmm. As women, we're always cycling through yeah. something. Yeah. So um, sugar, artificial sweeteners, you know, try to avoid them. Go for an, a natural option instead. Aspartame, super not good. And we could do a whole presentation of why aspartame is not good. So we're not going to delve too deep into that. But. but they've even said aspartame for a pregnant mother, stay away from it. Yeah, I've heard clients, that recently. Yep. Well, it's been going for years. I've had a lot of clients saying in the past that, uh, they were told by their doctors to stay away from aspartame while you're pregnant. So, wow. Yeah. So it, it's the aspartame really shouldn't be on the market. No, well, <laughs> at that point, yeah. Um, trans fats. I mean, when is that good for you? Let's be yeah. honest. Corn yeah. oil again. When is that good for you? Mm -hmm. Vegetable oil. So I'm talking. I'm talking the really heavy duty processed, barely makes the cut for actual food grade products. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Olive oil is wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, avocado oil, great. Uh, these are natural. Okay? Almond oil. Almond oil. Canola. Yep. Coconut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Canola yep. oil. Again, I remember studying that in kinesiology, and our teacher was like, "Please just do one thing today and cut out canola oil for mm -hmm. the rest of your life." Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. And as much as I hate to tell you, ladies, I'm sorry. Red wine, not awesome during certain parts sorry. of your cycle. Um, maybe menstruation. I don't know exactly which parts of the cycle are most effective by the, the presence of red wine. But what I always tell my clients, if you are someone who is dealing with pretty painful periods, maybe stay away from alcohol. And you can also test it. Test it when yourself. You, when you do have, let's say you just have to have that red wine, you're on your cycle, have a little bit, see how it makes you feel, see how you sleep, see how you feel the next day. 
that's also a way of you knowing when you should or shouldn't have any of the wine. Yeah. And I always tell people go with an organic option. Oh, organic's always okay. better. They don't have uh, the, what, what's the trig, triglycerides? What tryptophan? Is tryptophan in the wine. Yeah. They don't have any tryptophan. No, uh, it's a preservative. Oh, starts with a T. Sorry, isn't coming. It to may me not today. be tryptophan. No. Um, no. <laughs> oh, anyway, organic wine is certainly best. And I think if you are a wine drinker, you'll even notice the difference yeah. between organic wine and non-organic wine. That might just make it, again, test it on yourself. See how you feel having a little bit of your regular wine that you really like during the cycle, either you know uh, how it makes you feel going to sleep, waking up, and then try it with organic wine. That's how you'll learn. And maybe you. not a full bottle. Yeah. Maybe glass. Maybe yeah. glass. See how that starts? Start that. Half a glass. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, also hard cheese and dairy not awesome for people who are dealing with pretty painful periods. Mm -hmm. And I would say most of my clients with endometriosis, for example, would come in and they say, I've already cut out gluten. I cut out sugar. I cut out dairy. And I'm like, okay, awesome. And we're still dealing with this. Now it's a muscular thing. So we take it from there. Yeah. Um, instead consume foods that heal turmeric. You can take this as a supplement. You can eat the raw herb. You can put it in pretty much everything. In fact, I think I once saw a guy who made turmeric ice cream. Oh, it yeah. was weird, but oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I need I, I just put turmeric even yeah. some warm water and drink it as a tea. It's naturally anti-inflammatory. Yeah. Yep. Primo. Very good. Um, essential omega-3 oils, flaxseed, um, essential omega-6 oils, hemp, mm -hmm. and evening primrose. I'm going to let you talk about evening primrose. Yeah, evening primrose. <laughs> oil is all amazing for your moods, ladies. Um, for whatever reason, during period time, all our emotions seem to be heightened. And I'm talking more the uncomfortable emotions, unwanted emotions seem to be heightened. You may ask yourself, Gee, why am I feeling, why am I so upset about that? I thought I had dealt with that last week or last month. And during your cycle, it's like, oh, you just, it all comes up again. The uh, Evening primrose would really help a lot with that. Follow the instructions on the bottle. Uh, a very good brand that I know uh, CNF carries is Ephemol, E-F-A-M-O-L, Ephemol. Um, but it is a very, a very good supplement to be taking during your cycle for sure, but even just always, just to kind of have it on hand, even take a maintenance dose throughout your you know, days and weeks, really is, is good to have uh, around. Also, speaking of good food, Never forget your vegetables. Oh my God. Not, no. How boring, <laughs> how boring that is, vegetables. But boy, vegetables, what they can do for you, the energy, how they help you, especially when you're on your cycle and you're feeling so eh, blase, yucky, whatever. Vegetables won't make you feel that way. Vegetables do not have the knack to make you feel blase, yucky, heavy. Increase your vegetables, especially during um, your cycle. They're a Most healthy energy. Yeah, they're yeah. really healthy energy. And notice how they don't run away when you want to catch them. Yeah. They're right there. <laughs> there I am. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and if you don't eat them, they die anyway. So I might as well eat them, right? Yep. Yeah. And they're here for that. Just mm -hmm. say a little thank you to the plant. Yep. <laughs> yep. Now, getting into the specifics, I'll talk about my role in pelvic floor physiotherapy. So for those of you who don't know, pelvic floor physiotherapy is a very specialized form of therapy to assess and treat the muscles of the pelvic floor. I have a picture there so that you can see the muscles of the pelvic floor. These are the muscles. There's a whole bunch of little ones that come together to form what we collectively call the pelvic floor. It's not just one muscle. Is that the red? Is that all That's the, the red stuff. The red yeah. part is there. Um, yeah. And there's even some muscles that aren't shown there that kind of come up the bowl, the pelvic okay. bowl a little bit, oh, yeah. but they're basically the muscles that line the base of the abdomen and pelvis. It's the bottom of you. I call it the body's basement. Okay. And the pelvic floor actually plays a pretty significant role in menstrual care. So a lot of times if we're dealing with painful periods, what do we do when we're sore? We go, ow, don't hurt me. And it doesn't, it, everything just tightens up. So we, contract. we yeah. contract because that's what you do when you're sore. Mm -hmm. And all these muscles go into a tightened state, which super exacerbates painful period symptoms. So my job is to help reduce that muscle tightness. I, I do a com combination of hands-on techniques, home exercises, education to help improve blood flow to those restricted tissues. We do a lot of pain management in my, my clinic and my practice. So I will do things like the castor oil pack and I will talk to people about the castor oil pack, we'll do, which we'll get to in a second. Um, I do acupuncture as part of my treatment and pain management. There's breathing techniques, massage techniques that I'll do on the belly. It, who knew a belly massage would feel amazing. All of your organs live in the I knew, I knew. 
she knew. <laughs> um, all of your organs live in the torso. So it's nice to go and stimulate them with, with an appropriate abdominal massage. Um, I will also do a lot of treatment for secondary symptoms. So people who are dealing with painful periods often have to deal with severe constipation, cramping, of obviously, and extremely painful sex. And they will avoid their partners like the plague, not because they hate their partners, but because they know how they're going to feel after penetrative intercourse. So we'll do a lot of that kind of treatment and that work. Again, just treating these muscles, teaching them how to be flexible again, how to be open again, how to be relaxed. How they normally work. Or how they originally were. How and should to be. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah exactly. um, we also do uh, day one, when someone comes in with, with painful period symptoms, I will talk to them about self-management strategies. I'll actually be writing notes for them as they're telling me what's going on, things that they can do at home. Because I tell people all the time, I would love to see you every day. That would be great. I love the company. However, that's really hard on your wallet. So I don't recommend coming in every day, but what you can do every day are self-management strategies. My favorite one is the castor oil pack. I'll let you talk about that because you talk about it all the time. And she wrote the book on castor oil packs, I swear. <laughs> Actually, I didn't. However, now that you mentioned I was book, exaggerating. I, she did not write the book. <laughs> but I will tell you about a book that still exists, I believe. It's called The Oil That Heals. I should have brought it. I should have brought it. I knew I forgot something. The Oil That Heals. Purple cover. It is all about a doctor's um, testimonies of um, his patients using castor oil, castor oil packs phenomenal, phenomenal success he's had on all kinds of areas, but uh, not the least of which is uh, your cycle for women. Yeah. Um, during the cycle, I would not use a pack. Not even. while you're, not while you're having your period, but every other time is fine. Yeah. <laughs> not while you're menstruating, but using it on a regular basis, all the other times, the days before and days after, it will prepare the body to have a much easier, a much more comfortable cycle when your cycle comes, when menstruation is here. A casserole pack can be used uh, maybe 20 minutes every day, uh, an hour every day, or for three days, only three days out of seven, you could actually sleep with the pack overnight. There are packs that you can tie around the abdominal area. There's pre-made um, ones and you can make your own. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You can make your own. All you need, uh, let's, let's go just quickly sidebar to that. To make your own, you just need a 100% pure cloth, either linen, cotton, or wool. Yeah. About Those this size, things. right? Well, it depends on where you want to put it. Oh, yeah. It could be because even if it's a larger size, you can always fold it in on itself to suit the size you want. But it's nice to have different sizes of, of cloth, but they have to be pure cloth. No print, no ink on them, no dye in them. Uh, <laughs> so with plaid flannel, just yeah. learn that the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> plain, plain linen, wool, or cotton. Uh, you saturate it with castor oil. And the, the best place- Organic to be, castor oil. Yep, organic castor oil, which uh, CNF does carry community natural foods, carries very good brands of uh, castor oil, Palma Christi and St. Francis. Excellent very nice products. brands. Yep. You would saturate the cloth. I don't want to bore you in telling you the, all the details there because uh, they will even explain it on YouTube. You can, uh, if you buy a castor oil pack at Canadian Natural Foods, there'll be instructions They have in the there. packs, the pre-made ones there. We mm -hmm. constantly send people over there. Mm -hmm. Like, my God, and all the time. <laughs> and there's instructions in these packs. Yeah. So, um, but you could even use castor oil like a, like a body lotion. Just put a little bit in your hand. You take the lid off, put a little bit in your hand, maybe the circumference of a nickel, let's say. And then you want to rub it, you can rub it right over the abdominal area, the area actually between the, the belly button and pubic bone, just nice rub counter, uh, clockwise, clockwise, right in that area if you want, keep rubbing it in until it's completely saturated, the skin will still be tacky, a little tacky, but it will not be enough to stain your pajamas if you're going to bed or your work clothes, not at all, I do it quite often, you can even rub a little bit of castor oil that way over sore knees, arthritic yes. knees, I've used it on whiplash myself. Absolutely. <laughs> Sore shoulder. You've overworked at the at the gym or whatever. The shoulders are aching. Get your castor. Just rub it in. Just keep rubbing it in. It is, it is infinitely better in my experience, in my opinion, than the tiger bomb massage. Yeah. Um, what what are the tiger bomb W5A5? Something. It's yeah. like a muscle rub. Mm -hmm. Castor oil actually gets in and heals. Mm -hmm. It actually promotes healing. I Not used it on my husband's fractured leg. Mm -hmm. It's not just a band-aid solution. No. My, um, I mean, not veering away from what it can do for you. Of course, we're here talking about uh, our menstrual cycle, but uh, my brother 
fell off a roof. He was not supposed to have the use of his arm anymore. They repaired it. They reconstructed his wrist, all this. But he did the castor pack on his arm uh, every night. It was at least an hour every For like night. a year, right? Uh, it was a few months. And anyway. yeah, he did it consistently. Consist oh yeah, it was very, very disciplined that way. Everything that I instructed him to do regarding supplements, what to eat, what to take, what to drink, and what to do. He did religiously. And while well, he's got full, complete, full use of his own. He plays the accordion too. And he's you need a, drums for that. He's a master, <laughs> he's a master tile setter. He's yeah. tiles. I yeah. mean, you need hands for the that. The dude is busy and he, yeah. his arm never stops him. Yeah. So, so all that to be said, castor oil, it's something you want to keep in your, castor in your little, in your little first aid kit. <laughs> castor oil is boss. Yes. <laughs> hashtag castor oil is boss. I'm not hip enough to use the cast, the hashtag. I am. There we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyways, other things I'll do in my practice, as I said, education, we do lots of breath work, home exercises and acupuncture. Reflexology. Yes. Well, well, what can I say about reflexology that won't keep you here three weeks, but, um, I can tell you that there isn't anything, uh, that I have found yet. I've been doing this for over 30 years that reflexology does not help with how it can soothe, um, whatever mood you're going through during your cycle, whatever pain you're going through, discomfort is quite extraordinary, especially if you, like Cora was saying earlier, sometimes when you're that uncomfortable during your menstrual, menstrual cycle, you just want to curl up on the couch. You don't want to move. You don't want to do anything. Well, that's the, another beauty of reflexology. You don't have to move. You just lie down. I like to work with my clients lying down on a table and I just work on their feet or their hands or their head. They don't have to turn. They don't have to flip. They don't have to do anything. Just lie there. And nine times out of 10, almost 10 out of 10, I'm going to say, they fall asleep. They're yeah. sleeping in, in such a deep, sound sleep. Like, you know, it's one that they need it, feeling better afterward. I work, of course, it helps to balance the hormones even during your cycle. Uh, having reflexology regularly, let's say prior to your cycle, makes your cycle so much more bearable if it is uncomfortable uh, for you um, as a normally, if it's normally uncomfortable, painful. Oh my goodness, what reflexology has done. Yeah. That's the area I would work the pelvic area a little more, of course, uh, work all where the hormones exist in the foot, the points for the hormones, they will get worked, but the whole body gets worked. I work the whole body. I don't just work specific areas. The areas of concern would get more attention but the whole body gets worked. So yeah, you reflexology. Oh, I just think it's such a, a loving treatment. Mm. It's the and you do all it. kinds. So it doesn't have to be just on the feet. Nope. It can be on hands. Facial. It can be on face. Mm -hmm. It can be on the head. It can be a combination of all the above. Exactly. So exactly. Yeah. who doesn't want a nice hand massage? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hand massage can make such a difference. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, it helps regulating oh, menstrual cycle, yes. stimulates the pituitary gland, like the cramps. Wonderful, yeah. especially for mm -hmm. young people who are mm -hmm. dealing with periods that are not mm -hmm. quite finding their regulation, right? Because mm -hmm. you did it for me all the time. I was, oh, yeah. I was a little all over the place. I had primary dysmenorrhea. Yeah. <laughs> well, like I uh, mentioned just a moment ago about working the hormones, pituitary gland, uh, glands and hormones that help just working that helps yeah. regulate the thyroid, parathyroid. It's a, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it very, very successful, very, very effective. No question. Yeah. And she was my guinea pig. Even uh, as I was learning it, she was just a, a baby. And even as a baby, if she had um, a bit of colic, she was only months old, maybe a little bit of colic, a couple of days for whatever reason, I would just work her little foot for colic. I'd this is why the, we treat all ages and yeah, genders. Yeah. <laughs> I'd work the, the foot, the areas that needed to be worked. And she just looked at the kind of the stars, looked in in this space and how beautiful this felt and it's just and it just soothes the stomach it's, and yeah. she's been worked on ever since her and yep. her brother yep yep <laughs> <laughs> well supplements too yeah well, supplements uh, you'll see it there in the picture i want to start with one of my favorite menstrual care and cora can tell you awesome. tried it works yep works mm -hmm. and we had an endometriosis patient yeah. um several try yeah. it loved it yeah loved it master care is a pretty special uh supplement i have to say from himalaya the brand again i'm anybody who's listened to us before or myself anyway i'm about brands as well supplement yes what type of herb you're going to use but the brand is very important as well as little fillers and synthetic material that you can get in your capsules the better master care is a very good product a very clean 
um, very full of good herbs, okay? Now, for those who have very difficult periods, challenging cycles, um, I was told when I was trained by this company uh, for this product especially, you just need to be on it for three months. Three months, follow the instructions. I think it's four a day, two in the morning, two at night, I believe, uh, don't quote me, uh, for three months. And your issues should be alleviated not just made better, should be alleviated so that you never have to take this again. Now, should you a year, two, three, four, let's say pains come back and you just go on it again for another three months at full um, dosage, what's recommended on the bottle. And I tested that on my daughter, Cora. She I needed the three months. Yeah. That was it. That was enough for me. Mm -hmm. Everybody's a little bit different. So mm -hmm. I know one of our clients, she had to kind of continue it for beyond a that, longer. she did it at yeah. a half dose. Yeah. So you because, just got to see what works for you. Right. But that's because she did it at half dose. No, I think she did the three months and then cut it to half oh, dose half just to maintain. Then, oh, for sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but there's another 16 year old, two clients that I, uh, off the top of my head that yeah. uh, the 16 year old was a particular client. She was going every month for injections. Her pain was so bad. Hot water bottle, hot baths, curling up. It didn't matter. She never came for your sexology. I'm sure that would have helped, uh, but she didn't even know of me at the time. Uh, she was going for injections. Anyway, when we met, I was telling her about the menstrual care. She was explaining what she was going through. The mother bought three bottles right then and there. And yeah, when she came back, oh, the girl was just, oh, I didn't even know it was the same girl. Just yeah. her energy. You can have your life back. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, so menstrual care. Uh, again, another boss uh, supplement if you're having issues with uh, your cycle. Um, na uh, Nature's Way Wild Yam. Absolutely. This is sold at, so Menstrual Care, I don't think Community Natural Foods has it yet, but we're hoping they get it in. Yeah, there. I think they're going to try. Sure. Yeah. Try to get it um, they do have Stress Care, which is a wonderful That's kind of right. multivitamin herb that helps to keep stress down, which is nice for the circadian clock. Very good. Nature's Way Wild Yam, Community Natural Foods super has it. I tried this before menstrual care and it was the only thing that peeled me off the bathroom floor. Yeah, <laughs> the uh, the uh, wild jam, absolutely. Yeah. Very lovely herb, excellent for the nervous system, excellent for females. Yeah, Especially, it actually said on the container. Oh yeah. yeah, anything to do with women's anything, wild yam is fantastic. It can be used uh, just as a little sidebar. It, it used to heal the pelvic area, uh, to make a woman fertile and can also be used as a contraception. I'll talk to you about that perhaps another time, but that's how fantastic wild yam is. So get onto some of that. There's also wild yam cream that has worked for some women. You just put it on the fatty parts of your body, which like a good one the, is under the, arm. under the arm, just rubbing the cream under your arm. We, we have the little excess fat there. I just took the pills and literally my dad watched me turn from green to normal human color yeah. and then... Yeah, 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 it was, yeah. and it was a very short lived yeah. <laughs> and an excellent for the yeah. nervous system. So it helps with PMS while, yeah, yeah. Very much so the moods we get, you know, when you don't want to stick a fork in somebody's eye for no reason. Yeah. The well, Wild Yam could kind of help you, you know, maybe I shouldn't, or you yeah. put the fork down kind of thing. Even but still, <laughs> like if I'm having um, a little bit of cramping, I yeah. will just start, I'll take two Wild Yam in the morning, boom, done, gone. all yeah. gone. Yeah. Excellent for the nervous system. Yeah. You just feel calmer. You feel more whole. You feel like more together, the Wild Yam. The B6, vitamin B6, B12, those again are excellent for your mood. Mm -hmm. Very good for PMS. PMS and reducing that brain fogginess, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Clarity of the mind, calming the mind mind, um, all the, you know, how our mind monkey brain, we get uh, some of the women during uh, their cycles, PMS, B6, B12, amazing, very good. And you want, again, you want to get good brands, uh, aloe vera leaf, aloe vera um, gel, excellent products as well in helping to, well, good for the nervous system as well, mm -hmm. aloe vera, um, digestive system, when uh, many women during their cycle, the digestive system even is a little awkward weird or they can't eat this or they just can't die or bloating bloating which is going to say yeah uh, <laughs> eliminating seems to be an issue aloe vera yeah. get the aloe vera in your system make that a regular thing and again uh community natural foods has very good brands as well of that magnesium magnesium has over 300 functions for us 300 that's a lot oh 
Well, yeah, counting. <laughs> counting. Yeah. I use it kind of as a muscle relaxant or as I digestive aid to help mm-hmm. with bowel movements, mm-hmm. but there's there's 298 more. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's how important that that mineral is for yeah. sure. And uh for calming, like Cora was saying, muscle relaxing, but it calms, you know, it calms your mind as well. The bisglycinate is wonderful in calming your mind, helping with the circadian rhythm, mm-hmm. uh, circadian rhythm in getting better sleep. Because at least I remember what I was like during my cycle. I wasn't getting wonderful sleeps while I was in the cycle. I just wasn't. It wasn't. And I wish I'd known about the magnesium way back then. But yeah, uh, magnesium, a must also, for yeah. sure. And shatavari powder. I don't oh, know yeah. as much about that, but that's yeah. a wonderful mushroom that has yeah. so many wonderful medicinal properties. I believe mm-hmm. they have... I- I'm 99.9% certain that community naturals oh, have they it. Do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Absolutely. <laughs> then you'll get that at community naturals as well. Beautiful. And you can put it in your salad. It's a powder. Throw it in with your salad. Put, throw it in your smoothie. If you enjoy the taste, throw it in some hot water and drink it as a tea if you enjoy the taste. Um, just get creative with it. It's a powder. You can have it any way you wish. Oh, and aromatherapy, that's me too. That's you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to share this story. I taught aromatherapy for about six years, full body uh, oil application or massage, same thing. And why I started that, I uh, was giving treatments, of course, and aromatherapy massage. It was a woman who lived on my street. I had a little small clinic outside of my home at the time. And it was a woman, a neighbor on our street, uh, knew the work I was doing. She said, do you think you can give me a full body treatment? Could you work the abdominal area, the midsection? And I said, sure, absolutely. And she said, I have such horrible period. And I just know that this treatment, she'd never had aromatherapy before. She said, I just know, knowing what she knew, the little she knew about the treatment I gave, this is going to help me. And oh my goodness, did it ever. I'll never forget her, Charmaine was her name. Mm -hmm. And I worked just after one treatment, uh, the difference in her painful period, she was already a mother of two, but she had the, the painful periods were even worse for her. For some women, that after happens. Have, yeah, some women after they have children, it, it seems to regulate. Or it, it gets better. better. Yes. Or it gets worse. I've, yeah. I've had, it never was seen though. No. This <laughs> woman just swore by it. And ever since then, just working the midsection thoroughly with a wonderful essential oil blend. Uh, and there's so many, there's a uh, uh, what's ones that I I, I um, was talking about at the seminar on Saturday? I forgot, but there are uh, some blends for, for menstrual cycle, Young Living. Anyway, that's the brand you gave. Like you gave purpose. specific oils here. I, I did. Those are part of the blends. Well, well, they all these are all wonderful, of course. Peppermint, fennel, bergamot, geranium, geranium, an essential oil for anything to do for women. Anything doesn't matter what it is. Low sex drive, high sex drive, your cycle, and you can apply it to skin. Apply well. I would test that. Okay. I would test it before you apply it directly to the skin. Uh, try a drop, maybe here and there, but it's always with geranium. It is a little bit better to use a carrier oil. Carrier so, like oil. in your castor oil pack. Oh, you could put it. That's right. If you had the castor oil pack, you could put a drop of geranium on your castor oil pack. Yet another uh-huh. use for your castor. Exactly. <laughs> or mix it with a, a lovely essential, uh, a lovely carrier oil, like could be coconut, jojoba, almond, olive. Um, to name a few, there's excellent carrier oils and massage your own abdomen with uh, geranium as well. But it was just so effective, um, ladies, so effective to have just the midsection massaged even uh, just before you get your period um, or the day of even. I've been able to do that for some women and they they just swear by it as far as, um, right, uh, sorry, getting rid of discomfort. Uh, Clary Sage, with or without lavender plus sweet margarine, excellent combination, lavender. And as we see here, studies uh, show the benefit for menopausal symptoms as well. Lavender, the list longer than your arm as to what lavender can work on. There's nothing I wouldn't use lavender on right there. With I've castor used oil. it for sore muscles. Yeah. When I can't find my castor oil yeah. or I've run out, I'll just yeah. take a drop of lavender, put on a sore muscle. Absolutely. Don't even, didn't even know why, but it just helped. <laughs> right. Yeah. Lavender, quite extraordinary. Uh, and for hormone, hormone imbalances, again, geranium, clary sage, neroli, excellent. Clary sage is magical uh, for hormone imbalances. You just you just feel more put together when you have either inhale, very say, use it in your diffuser, um, in your bath, even one drop in a bath is fabulous. Um, and for heavy bleeding, there's a, forget the company now, that it was Vitex Berry. If you punch in Vitex Berry and you browse it, it's a berry, uh, excellent for- Oh, it's uh, a berry. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, it's a blend. Oh, it's a blend. Vitex Berry is a blend of several oils. 
just type that in there. I forget what company sells that, but that I've had a couple of clients say that they really found some benefits with that too, to help them with their cycles. Yeah. Aromatherapy. Nice. Yay. There's another way too. And rose oil. You've always talked to me about oh, rose oil. Well, rose oil. Yeah. That in India, rose oil is the queen of all flowers, queen of all essential oils. And jasmine was considered to be the king of Ooh. all essential oils. Yeah. Nice. So between rosemary <laughs> and jasmine, there's nothing I don't think it couldn't help. Just that they are so potent. You need so little, very expensive, very expensive, but you need so little. Matter of fact, rose oil, I would never use even a drop sometimes because it overpowered the blend. I would take a wood toothpick, skinny toothpick, dipped it in the through the hole on the top of the bottom of the plastic little device on the top. And whatever was left on the uh, toothpick that's what I put into the blend and mix the blend with that that's nice. all the rolls I needed yeah very very excellent oils as well nice all right so now just a quick word about products your weapon of choice during your period okay so there's three main products we have the menstrual cup okay so this is often made of silicone or latex it catches and collects low. It is eco and wallet friendly because you're not producing waste and you're not having to replenish and it's reusable. It's reusable. Mm -hmm. um, but check with your gynecologist because sometimes they may not work with an IUD or an intrauterine device. If your gynecologist has said everything's good, go for it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. If not, just double check. Um, it sometimes can be difficult to find the right fit for a menstrual cup. I know a lot of my clients who've had babies, they're like, oh, now my diva cup doesn't fit anymore. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, there's a couple of strategies around that, but they, they do have a, another menstrual cup that's like, or postpartum or, that's or right. after. They do, yeah. They do have different sizes. It's, it's just knowing which one. It's just, and yeah. it's testing that because not everybody is shaped the same. That's right. Now I just want to say one thing. If you are, of course, allergic to latex and oh, I know, yeah. Quite a few um, hospital workers, nurses, people who work with those latex gloves, wear them all the time. Uh, I've known of some that have to have had to even leave that line of work for how allergic they are to latex. Yeah. But just keep that in mind. Good allergic rule of thumb. Latex. Yeah. If you're having problems with it, don't use that problem. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, tampons. So this is designed to collect menstrual flow. It can be uncomfortable when placed incorrectly. But you'll know. You'll know. That's you'll the know. Good part. And follow yeah. the instructions when yeah. it tells you how to replace it. Yeah, um, opt for organic products. This is big. Um, organic Absolutely. products tend to be more plant based. They they are made of cotton instead of chlorine and bleach. Exactly, <laughs> chlorine bleach right inside the vaginal. Uh, um, like and you're keeping it there for eight yeah. hours, um, no, and your risk of what's called toxic toxic shock syndrome increases yeah. because of exposure to these unpleasant chemicals. Mm -hmm pads um there's a variety of options they're easy to obtain you can you can find them pretty much in any gas station if you need to um but again even those you can get organic exactly you want to go you want to go well yeah avoid definitely avoid toxic ingredients mm -hmm. bleach chlorine yeah. when i studied um pelvic floor physiotherapy this is going back a few years now they literally said the always brand means never always means never. <laughs> and I think I'm not sure, but I think always has changed a little bit. And they've, they've since removed the toxic chemicals from their, from their pads, but if they haven't always means never, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you can get leakage with these pads. If they are placed incorrectly, obviously, um, you can get reusable and disposable ones. So there are reusable pads. I found one brand. I think it's called the Luna pad. Is that reusable? Yes. Okay. You wash laundry. it like you would yeah. your regular laundry. Yeah. I might put it in its cycle by itself instead mm -hmm. with, you know, but my whites. But if there's anybody out there my age, you remember when we had cloth diapers mm -hmm. for our babies. Yep. We didn't have disposable ones and you'd wash those. Yeah. Maybe reusable pads would be similar. To but that. there's also period panties. Um, one company, NYX, you literally just wear underwear and it has a built-in oh. thing. And then you just wash that like Perfect. you would regular laundry. So you have options that are available to you, Perfect. ladies. <laughs> Perfect. All right. And I think that kind of concludes everything. Yeah. Now let's take some questions. So I see that we have one question in our chat already. Um, oh, Community Natural Foods has informed us that Himalaya Menstrual Care will be in, in the store the next, week, next or week or two. Customer Good. care department can check for when it is in stock for you. If you wanted to call the customer care department to find out about menstrual care, here's the phone number. 403 
9306363. Perfect. So if you have any questions about when they're going to be getting menstrual care in stock, talk to them. And um, we are open for any questions that anybody may have. If not, thank you so much for joining us for today's session. Oh, do we have one Q&A here? Just wanted to mention, I think there's a quiz you can take online. It's just the right type of, oh, perfect. Okay, Wonderful. so um, one of our participants has just mentioned to us that there is a quiz you can take online that will tell you or suggest the correct type and fit of menstrual cup product for you. Thank and you, Bethany. Yes, thank you, yeah. Bethany. I do think I remember hearing about those quizzes. That's great. Yeah, that's that's great. And then, of mm. course, try it out. See if it works for you. Yeah. So let us know. Yeah, let That'd us know. Great. Oh, Bethany doesn't have the link right now. Why, Bethany? Oh, <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. Honestly, sure we can a Google, Google search. A Google, Google search, search will put you out. For sure. Um, Okay, and so be free menopause. menopause, please. Yes. Yes. So, what would you like to? Okay, so what I know from premenopause is that there's lots of irregularity, can have longer periods, sometimes they can be more painful. Um, but since you've gone through it, do you yeah. want to talk about it? <laughs> well, premenopause, the, um, what, one of the first things that I noticed was how much time was going, was between one period and the next. So sometimes it was, got longer. Sometimes I got after two weeks, another cycle, normal cycle, and then two months would go by. And then I'd get it for another two weeks, like in a row. Yeah, it was, that's, that's premenopause. You'll get uh, heavy flows, light flows. Um, you'll start feeling your mood kind of like even odder than uh, more odd. If that's such an odd. Is that I right? like otter. Or, Let's yeah. go with otter. That's the word now. More odd than what you're used to when you have a, uh, your regular cycle um, and your body starts to change. Yeah. You start seeing a few changes in your body. It's, um, you know, for me, it wasn't the most pleasant, you know, kind of like just changes that I didn't really appreciate, but um, these are, these are some signs anyway. But you also, it's also, I think really important, especially like premenopause, menopause, regardless of period health, it's super important to keep after that circadian clock, get yourself to bed at a consistent time, wake up at a consistent mm -hmm. time, eat foods mm -hmm. that heal, avoid the foods that harm, come for additional support with a holistic practitioner. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. If you want hormonal testing, you can do what's called the Dutch test mm -hmm. with a naturopath. And they can actually find out where you're deficient, where your patterns are, mm -hmm. and they can tell you and what I found ex exceptionally helpful, I made sure I had regular either reflexology or aromatherapy treatments. Yeah. As much as I could afford in, in time and money, I would have that for sure. As soon as I thought, oh, I think I'm in premenopause, what a difference that made, even just in my moods, in my, my thinking, how, and you probably might notice your sleep. Your sleep is uh, disrupted. Yeah, These treatments help so much with keeping very close to a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. I hear this from my clients all the time. Mm -hmm. So sleep hygiene, super important sleep yeah. in a cool, cold, dark room. And uh, this will help combat night flat or night sweats. Yeah. Can't sleep right now. yeah. <laughs> um, night sweats, things like that make a huge difference. Do the light therapy that we talked about when mm -hmm. you step outside first thing in the morning to just kind of get your cortisol levels up to mm -hmm. a healthy level. Mm -hmm. And these are all things that are really great to just kind of boost the circadian rhythm. And also do, don't do um, get out of the habit, working on your computer just five minutes before you plan to go to bed. No, a bad habit, really. You want to stop, decide when you want to stop working at the computer, like an hour before, two hours before, either on your cell phone or the computer, get away from it, at least an hour or two before you decide you want to go to bed. So that night you want to go to bed at 11, make sure you stop at nine. Yeah. Okay, if you want to go to bed at nine, stop, get off of your computer and your cell phone at seven, then get that, that electronic buzz out of your system. And even overhead lighting, and then uh, like in this office right here, we have an overhead light. If you're working in um, on 
as that um, was it Dr. Alexander Smith was saying yes. that it was a great advice. We met her at Community Natural Foods event on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> she was saying about the pineal gland and how it affects us even more so when we're premenopause and menopausal. That light that's overhead, even in your office, in your kitchen, in your living room, that acts as sunlight. Okay. So remember, your body just perceives said. it similar to Exactly. Yeah. So, like we just said, you want to go out in the morning in the sunlight to wake you up. Well, you don't want that at night. So, you don't want that simulation of sun, which is that light, over your head in your office, your living room, or your kitchen, wherever you so have to be. Keep your lights lower. Or a lamp. Yeah. A lamp. lamp, a nice soft lamp. Work by that if you, yeah. if you can. After six, kind of pick a time. After mm -hmm. seven, I'm going to work by my lamp the side of a lamp, not an overhead light, something exactly. like that. Hope so all helps. things that help with the circadian rhythm. I mean, pre-menopause is a tough time. Menopause is a tough time. You don't have to do it alone. So seek the care that you feel you want to try at that time, what you, what you're comfortable trying and, and be consistent with it. So, mm -hmm. um, this way you can actually get the full benefit. Oftentimes, holistic health is is not just try it once and then oh nope didn't work no you got to be exactly. consistent you got to be consistent well so, it, the body's got to get used to it exactly too. so usually supplements you've always said to me be on them for like three months every minimum. naturopath has said to me three months minimum before you decide whether or not it works. three yeah three to, to what is yeah. it one to three minutes yeah. yeah so if you have specific questions that you want addressed you're more than welcome to give us a call anytime sure and crystal has a question here. yes yeah. so um we have a question about lighter periods um having changed with age 40 um, and struggling with infertility and thinner lining. Um, so I'm happy to hear that you have regular periods, recommendations. The first thing that comes to the top of my head is perhaps speaking with someone about some hormonal testing. Mm -hmm. um, thinner lining, first thing, this is a little outside of my scope of practice. So I'm going to just spitball here, but the first thing I think of is maybe you're a little low on progesterone, um, but a naturopath who does Dutch testing would be able to confirm that more easily than me. But I would say do things that kind of support the period to support you as much as possible. So, um, eating those foods that heal and help avoiding the foods that harm, um, paying attention to your energy levels throughout the month, not, not overdoing anything. Mm -hmm. And then reflexology. your reflexology for That's sure. Gonna help. Aromatherapy, the oils you mentioned, Absolutely. Help. geranium apparently fixes mm -hmm. everything. So. But the reflexology <laughs> and rose oil. Both reflexology and aromatherapy, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But sometimes aromatherapy, some people may not want that oil. At certain times of the day, I'm going to work. I don't want the oil. Whereas reflexology, nothing is used. You could, in the middle of your day, your work day, on your lunch, have a reflexology treatment. It doesn't have to be with me, of course. It could be with anybody that you know that, that gives a treatment. But I know of many uh, career women who used to come and see me for reflexology during their break. Or they're, they're using. Like, can you, can you encourage these people to buy their own oils? And yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Or, and in your bath, good quality <sighs> oil in your bath. Get to get back to your baths, ladies and gentlemen. You want to become friends and familiar with the good old bathtub, hot water, Epsom salts, essential oils, and let that be a wonderful doctor for you. Uh, three or four times a week, Crystal, I would 15 do- 15 to 20 minutes. Yep. Just a way to kind of soak in the good- I was always told minimum of 20 minutes. 20 minutes. So that's what I always do. I try to have at least three or four a week of Epsom salt baths, but I always add essential oil, always. Yeah. Whatever I'm feeling, whatever- my intuition is telling me, or sometimes I may go specific. I don't have as much energy that morning. I will have something energetic or I'm a little hyper worried about something. I will add something calming to my morning bath. I love my morning bath. Try it if you haven't done that yet. But but reflexology, I think, could specifically help with the infertility part yes. and, and the thinner lining. Because yes. just thinking now, you could stimulate the ovaries and the uterus mm -hmm. and then kind of help promote their function because Absolutely. there could be something mm -hmm. from an energetic level. And by that, I mean how energy moves along the body's meridians mm -hmm. that's blocking the uterus from being able to do what it needs to do. Mm -hmm. And so it makes for a friendlier, that. Yeah. makes for a friendlier, um, Oh, when the sperm swims up there, where's it swimming to where it has to attach the fallopian. Oh yes. yeah. <laughs> makes for much more, uh, friendly your ova and sperm and that's right <laughs> will gladly welcome the sperm there yes. you go that's yes. the best and a healthier egg will be there waiting for it exactly <laughs> exactly all right so we have no open questions at this time if there's any other questions you're welcome to fire them off now or reach out to us later or on. reach out yeah. to us later on mm -hmm. you know what i'm actually going to jump back to our screen 
with our address. Here we are. So um, feel free uh, to give us a call if you have any specific questions. You can also email us. I'm excellent with email. If you have any specific questions about your health needs, please give us a call anytime. Anytime. Yes. Thank you for tuning in and have a wonderful evening. Yes. And thank you so much to Community Natural Foods for hosting these wonderful events because it gives us a chance to reach you. You can ask questions and get an idea of where you want to take your health journey and and they're can't great. thank them enough. They're, <laughs> they're a great store. <laughs> Sorry about that. Some water. Yes, I think no. so. <laughs> it's dry in Alberta. A little bit dry here. Yeah. They're a great store. I yes. love them. Oh, I, I, they're at least one spice. Very picking up fresh produce. Very informed about their supplements yeah. too. Every time I've yes. gone there, I've asked questions like, what's this for? What, how does this help? Oh, yeah. And they're like, oh, this is perfect for you. Yeah. So and by all means, friendly. very friendly. No matter who you ask, they're yeah. all happy to have them. Anyway, yeah. good night, Absolutely. everyone. Thank you. And uh, if Beth wants to bounce or jump back on, maybe say anything. Beth is there. See, I'm just wondering if Beth from Community Natural Foods wanted to say one final thing. Nope. No. Okay. All right. So we'll just we'll just hang up from here. So Beth, uh, thank you again, and everybody have a wonderful evening. We'll see you next time. <laughs>